We have recently covered many of the amazing archaeological ruins, which can be found within modern-day Turkey. And it would be foolish of us not to devote a small fraction of our investigative minds on what is probably the most enigmatic of them all. Placed high atop a rather suspiciously shaped mountain known as Nimrut, someone, at some time within our very distant past, went to tremendous efforts to create what academia have concluded was some sort of tomb. This however, absence of any king or queen's remains to date, or indeed any other form of evidence to support such claims. Said to have been constructed by the Kamajini Kingdom some 5,000 years ago, the enormous stone statues are placed at a height of 2,230 meters above sea level. Because of the site's clearly tremendous antiquity, coupled with the astonishing achievements involved in creating it, many people attribute the site as the eighth wonder of the world. Furthermore, and perhaps most intriguing regarding the ruins, is the fact that Mount Nimrut Da is one of the only places on Earth where a number of sunrises and sunsets can be observed. Every year, thousands of local and foreign tourists come to Nimrut Da to watch the sunrise and sunset. Was this particular anomaly found at this specific location a factor in the decision to place this mysterious structure at the top of Mount Nimrut? And if so, how did a culture more than 5,000 years ago understand this? The name Nimrut is a relatively modern one, dating back only to the Middle Ages. In Armenian legend, Hike defeated the biblical king Nimrod and buried him in these mountains, meaning the real name of the mountain at the time of the monumental structure's construction remains unknown. According to academia, quote, the tumulus or ceremonial mound at the site, which is 49 meters tall and 152 meters in diameter, was possibly built to protect a tomb from tomb robbers, since any excavation would quickly fill with loose rock. The statues appear to have Greek-style facial features, but Armenian clothing and hairstyling." End quote. We find it interesting that academics would happily mention the amazing characteristics included in the build, the hidden chambers beneath being booby-trapped with multiple tons of loose gravel, placed atop to quickly fill any tomb robbers' attempted burrowing tunnels, stifling their attempts to loot the site, yet say with their second breath that the site was somehow looted some time within antiquity. The site was excavated in 1881 by Carl Sester, a German engineer assessing transport routes for the Ottomans. However, his claim of a tomb have never been validated. Subsequent excavations have failed to reveal the tomb of Antiochus, the supposed character who resides here. This, however, has not deterred academia to continue to strongly argue that the site is indeed his burial site. Who built the ancient monumental structure high atop this mountain within Turkey? Why did they build it? Was it indeed constructed, like Elijah Hoyuk, by a far more advanced civilization than we are led to believe? The more we learn regarding these ancient sites, the more such a proposition becomes a real possibility. The mission of our channel has always been to provide our viewers with impartial evidence found through ruthless logic, visual investigation, and expeditions to ancient sites far too advanced to have been constructed by said culprits within currently known history, that being post-Ice Age man. Highly precise, highly advanced, or often enormous megalithic features which not only exposes deliberate inaccuracies regarding currently guarded, staunchly defended, and academically regurgitated explanations of our history as a whole. The ancient Egyptians' construction of the Great Pyramids, for example, is not only argued as true by those who themselves have experienced this same conditioning and to never allow intellectual deviation. We are taught by nearly every influential medium every aspect of historical study, an incomplete tale of events. For once anyone begins to question the legitimacy or the mainstream explanation for these sites and the construction events they would have been, 
it naturally leads to one unraveling more and more enigmas, anomalies, and inconsistencies within not only the tale of Giza, but countless aspects of currently pushed explanations for so many sites that contain to this day unexplained, remarkably precise, often ingenious methods of construction, all ignored by academia as a whole. For not only is Khufu's pyramid 6.5 million tons polar to this unimaginably enormous undertaking it must have been to cut, move, and use so many stones at that location, with a plateau also argued by some as having artificial origins. Longyu Cave in China is yet another enormous ancient unexplained site, similar to Durinkyu, another ancient underground city found within Turkey. Longyu Cave has a staggeringly huge inner footprint, the many millions of metric tons of stone hollowed out to create the cave system has never been located. Stone cut using a tool which left an intriguing yet highly recognizable mark simply gone, excavated, and transported away somehow. We have always attempted to provide accurate information, and although we have our own opinions on said subjects, we feel it is far more important to convey all information, so that we all have an opportunity to come to our own conclusions based upon all the findings made during investigations. We attempt to provide that which we were, and still are, all being starved of. The whole picture was obscured from us, never actually teaching us how to apply our critical capacity to question the legitimacy of what we are told but to push buttons, repeat information, and pull levers. Our mission is to share as many events as can be found regarding the technological advancement and also the possible true age of man. To prove beyond any reasonable doubt that not only have humans been around far longer than currently attested, but we, as a species, not only have a far greater yet hidden history, many specialists around the globe also believe that we display traits of a past, a mass trauma which subjected us to such a difficult existence that behavioral traits within humans became prevalent demanded of by this hostile environment, some of which are still strongly displayed to this day within modern society. Although we have covered current problems with evolution theory, in relation to the missing leaps between species, vertebrates, or phyla groups, natural selection is a completely different animal. For a behavioral trait to become prevalent, however, like some often displayed within societal behaviors, particularly when it comes to procreation or what we seek in a mate, are all indicative of a past experience of cataclysm. Our work's mission was initially to convey to the world as many aspects of history, still completely a mystery, and most importantly, to expose the conditioning and circulation of fallacies, which for decades deceived modern society of a true tale of the history of our planet, and especially our species. We began to notice that many of these ancient sites display similarities with each other, regardless of geographical distances. We have now identified countless sites which were undoubtedly the work of the same civilizations. Not only did these similarities show a sharing of technologies globally, thus proof of a global civilization, and due to having identified differentiations and similar features between certain sites, and the masonry techniques used therein, enabled us to make the first strongly supported successful identification of more than one lost civilization anywhere north of Giza's casing stones. Each subject we cover, not only adding a little bit more weight to our argument of past highly advanced civilization, but also expanding the field of evidence to prove its true case. It feels now that it is not an if, but rather a when in regards to truly knowing our true history. As our understanding of this lost past grows, so does our understanding of ourselves. It is an endeavor which we find highly compelling. We are often confronted with peculiar, seemingly impossible artifacts that will, after some in-depth investigation, 
leave one with more questions than answers. This, either due to their enormous, often seemingly impossible sizes, megaliths in some locations weighing far over 1,000 tons. Somehow, once used in their construction, sometimes set aloft, proof that not only were these stones hewn but moved and lifted seemingly with ease. But also, alas, the lack of public exposure many said sites are granted, often minimal at best, thus countless examples of advanced ancient technology remain still hidden here upon our planet. As a consequence, many have avoided scrutiny. Details therein which are clearly of a controversial nature are conveniently absent any funded studies of said ruins. We feel ruins of great importance but due to the strength of evidence one can surmount in support of past, once highly advanced ancient civilizations at said locations, they are largely overlooked and actively avoided by funded archaeologists, academics, and historians alike en masse. Simply ignored, thus preventing all from what we feel is a birthright, an accurate, warts and all, transparent exploration of the origins of humanity and, in turn, the history of our planet. Allowing one and all to make up their own minds in regard to the origin of said sites, no matter how controversial. This is the exact reason for the channel's creation, and is the driving force behind the six books one intends to write. A revolutionary cataloging of once, yet no more, deliberately overlooked or academically dismissed sites, dotted all over the world. For when one explores our content, they will be made aware of a smorgasbord of unique and often inexplicable features which can be found all over Earth. In addition, it is not just the visible feats of ancient stoneworking that are the singular astonishing legacy left by a now lost, once highly advanced ancient civilization. For there are many other feats accomplished in a bygone era. Prehistoric mine shafts can still be found in many areas of Earth. Not only are there still existing, seemingly machine-cut, extremely ancient, incredibly deep mine shafts in a number of areas of Earth, including those featured found within Tel Aviv, are all but one among many relics, all clearly left by a capable group hidden from the world. But ancient cities exist also, ones covered previously, which were all once somehow cut from Earth's bedrock, that due to their location, have fortunately been explored by a number of individuals over the years, never funded, but merely driven by curiosity. Thus, the true, astonishing depth, and indeed the incredible achievement these once were, has all been previously documented. Civilizations that were once capable of not just digging these mines to incredible depths, but were, in fact, capable of creating entire temples from one gigantic solid stone cut with such incredible artistic ability and accuracy, they are staggering examples of ancient engineering. In China and Japan, gigantic megaliths left, mysteriously abandoned, Easter Island, the unfinished obelisk Aswa, Egypt, Yangshan Quarry within China, all abandoned, with Yangshan possessing an almost detached megalith, clearly cut using incredible stone-cutting tools a block estimated as weighing 16,000 tons when liberated from the bedrock. All these anomalies are but a few examples which support the premise of lost technology, knowledge, and an advanced civilization. It seems that the advanced mines, like those found in Tel Aviv, are but a tip of an archaeological iceberg in regards to the mystifying stone-cutting of a now lost antiquity. Why did humans placed within a lost chapter of antiquity exert such backbreaking effort in the attempt of extracting these precious metals? Who dug the Tel Aviv mines? Was it the same group who built ancient Peru? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling. When asked what are the largest, heaviest, and indeed the once most difficult stones to ever have been cut, transported to, and precisely placed within the great structures of the Giza Plateau, we would have previously stated that the granite ceiling blocks found within the King's Chamber in the Great Pyramid were the largest known, with some of these stones weighing as much as 100 tons. However, 
it turns out that there exist many other stones upon this mysteriously created plateau, which far exceed the pyramid's inner megaliths. Unsurprisingly, these discoveries are rarely shared academically, or indeed to the many people who pay to visit the Giza Plateau each year. The Valley Temple is but one example of these other, less mentioned, marvelously enormous stones, eight of which are still present within the structure's ruin, the largest of which still being roughly 3 by 3 by 6 meters in size. Furthermore, the same similarly sized stones can also be found within the Kefren Pyramid Causeway Temple. The structure is also rarely discussed or shared by Egyptologists or archaeologists alike. It seems that academics who fear a loss of funding from particular bodies tend to merely ignore that which they are confronted with, which they simply cannot explain. Again, the same enigmatic megalithic blocks can be found in the causeway temple of the Miserinus Pyramid. One finds the same highly eroded, thus extremely ancient stones. It seems that these huge stones seemingly litter the Giza complex, and amazingly, they are successfully ignored merely due to their controversy. Yet the largest to be found anywhere upon this man-made plateau are to be found hidden in plain sight. Overlooked for many millennia, the still remaining foundation stones, upon which much of the east side of the Kefren Pyramid once stood, were not lifted into place, but were indeed transported to this location and precisely placed into position. These stones are so massive and so perfectly dropped into the surrounding landscape that thousands of people have walked right over them every year without ever realizing what they were standing on. Although the true depth and thus complete scale of the block is currently unknown, if it is of a cubic shape, it would appear to be roughly three quarters the weight of the pregnant woman of Baalbek. She weighs around 1,001 tons which would make our foundation stone anywhere from 500 to 750 tons in weight. Clearly, a controversial yet incredible discovery, one which takes our understandings of the sheer undertaking that was Giza, are still at an early stage. Nonetheless, such discoveries move us one step closer towards finally understanding just who could have built the Great Pyramid Complex of Egypt.